Hello friends, today we are again going to discuss one-sided hand weakness. Already we have discussed in my mirror therapy video of how the illusion created by the mirror helps in improving the function of the weak hand. But today we are going to talk about another technique known as constraint induced therapy. As the name suggests, constraint stopping the good hand from functioning so that the weak hand gets the maximum use. This constraint therapy is not only restricted to hand weakness related to stroke but also in traumatic brain injuries or multiple sclerosis or in kids with cerebral palsy it's very effective. The person should have the motivation to want to work with the hand. The person should have enough cognition to understand the basic idea of how to perform hand functions. And finally, a good enough balance to maintain a sitting position in order to do the constraint therapy. A forced use of the affected hand. Intense repetitions need to be provided and restraining the good hand, of course. You have to do it for up to six hours a day or so. It will be good enough for you. Use of objects task specific training it really really helps you to achieve your goal better rather than just performing movements now the way in which you can constrain the hand is put a glove or mitt around it or simply place it behind your back i'm ready for my constraint therapy session so first for that let's start with very very gross activities like I want to hold this basket but if this hand is weak I might not be able to grasp the entire thing or open my hand completely so let me start with a simple pen it's easier to hold and release and then move you can move on to thicker objects of thicker diameter and then finally as big an object as possible so always try to grade the size of the objects that you're going to practice on it's not only about grasping the object, but there is something that will help you to control and grade your movement, which is if you try to push the objects with your affected hand. So try to push them in specific directions so that you also know your range and always keep your shoulder relaxed rather than elevated and trying to put extra force or try to use your body to perform the movement. Let your hand move. A thing that really helps when you're about to start constraint therapy is try first of all taking weight on your hand so for example if I want to get up from this chair I should be able to place my hand and try to get up from here so in this what can happen is my hand can slip my elbow can bend and I will of course fall in order to avoid that you can use a stable surface like a table and then move on to things like a cane or a smaller object on which you can lean in order to practice this while holding some blocks in your hand and maybe placing them on the table a very simple activity would be trying to lift them and dropping them this is a very good practice for grasp and release but make sure First of all, it's kept towards the side, then move it across the midline or outwards so that it gives you practice in the entire range. Stacking objects is another interesting activity. So you can take small blocks like this and try to stack them. Of course, there would be a tendency to let them fall first and then try to do it in as coordinated a manner as possible. Another thing that you can practice with it is try to place it in specific places so that it's a good practice of not only placing but also some kind of coordination that you have with your affected side. Clips are a wonderful way to practice pinching. So try to use first all your fingers against your thumb to try to pinch and release it. And I know this angle is very, very difficult to achieve. So try to stabilize your elbow and then try to do it. This also prevents shoulder elevation while trying to do the activity. A remote is a very good tool so that you can practice individual finger movements, individual thumb movement also. 
so if you can practice individual buttons over here try to use it to change channels on your tv or even using something like a keyboard or a piano if you are interested in that and the final activity which i always think is really difficult to do is turning cards which is a representation of turning pages in a book so trying to do them on an individual basis is difficult but you can always try to do it this way because it will not only help you with individual finger movements but also with something known as supination and pronation the turning of the hand, palm up and palm down and try to space them out so that it again covers a wider angle even my hand got tired now <laughs> so try to practice this only for the time when you are able to do it smoothly and you do not feel any kind of fatigue in your affected hand please try to apply these task specific training ideas in your daily routine and let me know in the comments below how informative this video was we'll meet again